Good morning everyone. I haven't vlogged for quite some time. I've wanted to vlog as always is the way and have tried to here and there the last few weeks but just haven't really, it's really just been quite busy and you know like just lots going on. I was trying to vlog then it was Easter holidays and the kids were off for two weeks and honestly it's all consuming when they're both at home and we didn't really do anything. I was also working so it just wasn't like fun and then they went back and I thought right I'm gonna start vlogging and then I just was working and yeah it's just things are just a bit all over the place and I can't really handle doing like loads of stuff at the moment so that went out the window but anyway and I say I'm gonna vlog this week nothing particularly exciting is happening but I just thought I need to get back on the vlogging train because I miss it so much he's a very big boy he's nearly 18 months now which means a year and a half in like normal language. Yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, Angel. Yes, I am. Yeah, he's at that age. Well, he has been for a while, but it's like where they really start becoming like a little person and like a little boy and you see their little personality. And it's funny because <laughs> everyone used to say this about Gabe, like his respective ages. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? Because you just see their little personality. And I was always like, yeah. But I really see the difference between both of them in terms of like what they're doing and what Gabe wasn't doing. So it's kind of bitter. Oh god, I feel like I'm gonna get upset talking about that. God, I really didn't think I was going to, but it's a bit, it's a bit bittersweet. Okay, we won't start there if upset, but there's my angel. Hello. Is that you? Is that a gorgeous angel? <laughs> it's a gorgeous boy. Oh, you wanna sit on my lap? Okay. Oh, hello. Look at this sweet, sweet angel. Oh. I look like an egg. Okay, right, so I just dropped Gabe to nursery. And now I've just got to pop to Waitrose. But I actually um, end up having a chat with a mum, with the nursery mum. Right, can I have one of these trolleys? What's going okay. Now we're going to get bits. Just a yogurt and stuff like that that didn't come in the food shop yesterday. I get the food shop delivered on a Sunday. And a couple of things to the come, which is very annoying. So. Ellie. Love the twirly woos. Right, so we're back from Waitrose. I just grabbed a few bits, but oh god, the thing's wet. Key! Key! And you love my keys. Key! Is that a key? So yeah, sorry, back from Waitrose. Excuse me. Just picked up a few bits, namely milk for my coffee. Gabe's milk, he still very much drinks this particular oat milk because it doesn't have oil in it, just in case anyone remembers that. Really itchy for ages on whole milk, just all of a sudden switched into oat milk. He drinks a lot of oat milk, never really took to water. Um, then realised oat milk has lots of seed oil in it. Wasn't happy about that, but we found this one that doesn't and he loves it. So I just had to get, I actually ordered this in bulk off Amazon, but I just had to pick up a couple more because I don't know, I need to check when my next order is coming. We have also got thin liners, yogurt for the boys muesli. And then just their normal, uh, like after dinner yogurts. Milk fed tea and then tea because we're running out of tea. I have been addicted to this. This Sabra Baba Ganoush with pita bread. I can't stop eating it. Like I literally eat it every day. I probably go through about four tubs of this a week. Like it's in. I've got my almost empty tub here and because I knew I was going to run out today. If I, oh, Ellie, don't put that in your mouth. <laughs> we might have to cut this short. Just <laughs> Do you want to show what? Look, we've only got one more thing. <laughs> he loves to help clean, which is great. <coughs> it's, it's you. Mwah, my gorgeous baby. Let's pop this over. No, I said Alexa, turn off. Busy. Alexa, turn off. Right, has anyone else got an Alexa that's really playing up? I've got one in the kitchen and one at work in the salon, and they are really pissing me off. She's not listening to me. Well, the one at work is the most annoying because it's just stopped shuffling my playlist. I have a Spotify playlist and it I, it's on shuffle, no different than usual. We'll play a few songs and then just stop completely. Um, and then Alexa here, I have the radio on and the radio will just stop. So is, is anyone else experiencing this? Is it like Apple where you have them for a few years and then they start cocking up and you've got to get a new one? I want to get a Sonos for the salad anyway, so it's not a huge issue. Hello, my gorgeous, look at that pointy finger. Look at that pointy finger! Oh, we celebrate a pointy finger in this house. If you have 
um, and also switch charger on, understand the importance of a pointy finger. Gabe does point now, but he didn't point for ages. And Elliot loves the point, so we're really happy about that. Anyway, that's off topic. To make my protein smoothie, I'm still very much having this. Did I mention, I mentioned, I think in a vlog, like I was finding that mornings are so chaotic with the kids. I was like involuntarily like intermittent fasting. So I started making sure I make a smoothie. And it, this is the whey protein that I love. I tried form and I hate it. It's disgusting, it's grainy, it tastes artificially sweet. Whoa! Tastes artificially sweet like lots of other proteins do, but this one, the cacao and maca, oh my god, it's incredible. Like it's actually a joy to drink. This is a new thing I add into my protein, which is a collagen um, sachet from Vida Glow. Okay, we're now in the car because I'm just waiting outside Gabe's nursery to go and have a meeting about him and I thought let me give you a little update on my gorgeous angel Gaby just because it might help some people so Gaby is at what's technically called preschool um, but it's like nursery and we love his nursery it's amazing it's like a forest school type ethos they also are really great with kids with autism they have what's called a provision so like a classroom for autistic children and a mainstream bit. Gabe is in the mainstream bit, but he has what's now called a supported place and they do lots of things with him and he's just come on amazingly and they are just so wonderful. Gabriel would be due to start school in September. He's gonna be four in August, but given that he is significantly behind his peers and he's an August baby, we are actually delaying his school start so he's not going to be starting school in September he's going to be staying at his nursery where he is now and this was very much encouraged by the nursery as well and basically anyone not even to do with additional need anyone in the UK that has a July or August born child specifically but like a summer born child can request to delay their school start because it's just such a huge difference at this age like Gabe will start well like when he started nursery he started he'd only just turned three and within weeks of starting we were getting party invites to kids turning four that's like a whole year older and it'll be the same as school he'll have just turned four and there'll be kids turning five so that feels good for us we still had to go and look at schools and put in a request to delay it they said yes um so that's what's happening so um we're hoping that he basically goes into the provision at his nursery because you don't if you go through this you may hear the term the panel <laughs> all i hear about is this elusive panel and they're like the volturi like they decide the fate of your child's life basically and they often decide it based on never meeting them and just having a load of paperwork about them <laughs> so you can't apply and this goes for like any sort of provision or need this panel decides so this panel decides who goes into this class however being in this nursery I feel like we are in the system we have so much support and I feel so lucky and they're basically sorting everything for us and the SEN coordinator at the nursery um, knows the panel they know Gabe she's made him known to them so yeah we should find out in a few weeks I think whether he can go into the provision but even if he can't He's got on so well in the mainstream setting. He's really supported there. He'll be fine. But it's just in the provision, there's slightly more like one-to-one -one support. So they have like speech and language therapists and everything. What I'm going in for a meeting today is another thing if you have a special needs child uh, for school start is that you may hear the term EHCP. And this is basically means education healthcare plan because it basically is like a guide of what your child needs. I mean, I think every child should have this, <laughs> typical or not, because every child should be taken as an individual, but we'll, we won't get into my view on schooling. Um, anyway, this EHCP in brief is an outline of what your child needs within a structured educational setting in order for them to thrive. And so, if you and it can include things as kind of not basic but as simple as they need a 15 minute movement break every 15 minutes um to they need a one-to-one -one, a teaching assistant with them at all times and so the reason why this is so good is because a it's something that the school or education system education setting has to abide by and you can hold them to it if they don't um, and two, uh, the school will get funding. So 
if for example they need a teaching assistant the school will get funding to ensure that they can allocate that i've heard lots of things about how even if you have an ehcp some settings still don't follow it so i know that that, that i know there's that aspect to it but essentially you want one of these. So this is what this meeting about. I, I am meeting with an educational psychologist now, I guess to talk about Gabriel, um, because they are doing his EHCP process. So that's what I'm waiting for now. And it's kind of just struck me, am I gonna, is this, am I gonna cry? <laughs> because most meetings with some kind of professional about Gabe make me emotional. I feel emotional now. <laughs> So yeah, I was very much just like, like with all these things, I'm like, oh, I've got this meeting today. And now that I'm here, I'm like, okay, I could start crying now, but I'm not going to, I'm going to stop talking, prepare myself, go and have this meeting and then we'll catch up afterwards. <laughs> oh, hello, hi, I'm just at my salon now um, because I have got a client this afternoon. I feel so exhausted. <laughs> So a full fat coke, cool. Just going to Ipsy on my way to grab some lunch. Chicken and spring onion gyoza and salmon nigiri. So I had the meeting at Gage Nursery. It was really positive. I did get upset, but it was in a positive way because it was just so nice to hear like how they view Gabe. I feel like um, it's very obvious that Gabe is autistic and so whenever we, in the very rare occasions we're with other children or other families, other parents, I feel like that's all they see. And his autism at the moment is just a huge barrier to anyone knowing anything about Gabriel. And he isn't, he, he isn't Gabriel, he's just an autistic boy. I feel like that's all anyone sees him as. But it was really nice because the nursery don't see that at all. And like as his parents, both Hainsey and I, and nursery, it seems, feel that the biggest area of concern is his communication. And the biggest focus is to try and support him to become verbal, express his emotions, be able to tell us how he's feeling. But outside of that, there's not a huge cause for concern. The Senko said she was like, the communication is the barrier. And once we overcome that, like it will be so much easier, but basically the autism isn't what she sees as the biggest barrier. And it was just so nice to hear that. You know, these meetings with professionals, a lot of the time it's about what your child isn't doing, what where they lack, where their deficiencies are, I suppose. And it can be really overwhelming and really sad, but this felt really positive and like, basically as long as he's got the right support, he should thrive and he is thriving and they all just love him so much. It's so nice, like an educational psychologist who's only been there a few weeks and said like he really stands out as like this really calm, like loving child and like the Senko said the same thing, like he's just like such a lovely boy and it's like, oh, what a sweet angel, anyway. Um, so that was positive, but I just, maybe that meeting's just made me feel suddenly exhausted, but anyway. Love a quiet John Lewis on a Tuesday morning, how fabulous. I love coming shopping on a Tuesday morning. I'm not actually shopping, I'm nipping in and then nipping out again. And we're gonna go to Pilates, but I'll explain in the car what's happening. Um, right, I've just made a mad dash to John Lewis this morning before heading to Pilates. And that is because we had quite an eventful night last night. Um, little Ellie, <laughs> um, I feel like, have I got time to tell this story now I need to drive to Pilates? I basically just needed to go and grab pajamas for Elliot in a bigger size. Maybe I need to drive to where Pilates is. So I might tell this story when, either when I get to Pilates or afterwards. Okay, let's go. Absolutely beautiful. And you know, that is definitely a treat lunch now and again. didn't really take you into Pilates because it's a bit like awkward. It's a very small studio. Um, so I can't really film myself doing it and like walking in and stuff if there's people already there. It's like, oh hi, but you saw the studio. It's a lovely one. So right, let me tell you what happened to Elliot. Um, I've got the camera here, I'm just keeping an eye on him because he's napping because he had quite an eventful night last night. We're all very tired. I was doing hair yesterday afternoon. When I got home and just before he was going to bed, he suddenly got really upset and we just thought he was really tired. He looked really tired and there was nothing really like glaringly obvious that was wrong. Hainsey went up and put him to bed. He went off to sleep, no problem. I then go to bed and <clears throat> he's 
really quiet and I just wanted to keep like checking that he was breathing because I'd noticed on the camera that he hadn't really moved much when he was in bed and he and we were just a bit concerned because he'd been so upset before bedtime and it just wasn't really clear as to why so we're kind of keeping an eye on him on the camera noticed that he hadn't really moved much he usually rolls around a lot more all this kind of stuff anyway so I go up to bed he then starts kind of crying but not like hugely usually if he wakes during the night he will sit up or he'll stand up look over the cot at me um but he wasn't really attempting to get up so I picked him up and I realized his left his right arm just wasn't really moving and so I put him on the bed turned the light on he wasn't putting weight on it and every time we tried to like bend it like this he'd get upset so we called 111 um because his arm didn't look broken nothing looked out of socket it, it looked normal it wasn't swollen it was just really odd that he wasn't really moving it and obviously seemed in pain but there wasn't anything glaringly obvious it was like what's happened so they called 111 they then said take him to a &E. so Hainsey took him to a &E. they did an x-ray they couldn't see anything glaringly obvious on the x-ray so they said if it's a fracture it will be very small we'll send it to the clinic and they'll get back to you so they put a cast on it anyway i think as like a precaution and so now that lelly's got a little cast on his arm <laughs> and hence why i was going to buy pajamas to put it over his cast so that he can sleep tonight i'm gonna go and see the consultant on friday morning for a follow-up appointment and then today he's in really good spirits completely himself and he has been moving his arm so i don't know i was looking up on the internet and there was a thing called nursemaid's elbow which is where when they under five their ligaments are quite soft so they can quite easily if you kind of i don't know pull them up by their arms or something it the ligaments could come apart i don't really understand ligaments but that can happen like relatively easily and as they get older it stops so i feel like it could be that or something like that because it that says the arm doesn't appear physically different oh also update when I was going to vlog last week, I was going to vlog because I went to the dentist for my Invisalign checkup. Like, can you even believe how straight my teeth look? For those of you that have been to Hawaii, you may remember my teeth were absolutely fucking awful. So wonky. And I'm now, I've just switched today to week 13 of my aligners. But oh my God, I can't believe I actually have straight bottom teeth. I never thought I'd see the day. I'm just in the car not sure where i left off the vlog last time i'm quite sure it was when i went in for gabe's ehcp stuff and i was talking about, about him i don't know where i left off so i'm gonna start editing this at some point this week and see and then talk to you if i need to like round that off but that was a, oh god when even was that a week ago was that last week i've come into town because i'm having a facial this morning i just needed it one of my news resolutions not new year's New Year's slash like the kids are like Elliot's at an age now where I feel like I can start to do things for myself i.e. go to Pilates i.e. try and get regular facials it's something I've wanted to do for a while and you know she's no spring chicken so I need to start doing these things I want to start getting like quarterly facials so like every three months and so it's about that time I had a hydrofacial beginning of the year and so I want to have another hydrofacial. I'm not going to the same place that I went to before, which I would like to have gone to, but I couldn't get an appointment from the times that I could do. So I'm actually just going to one of those therapy clinics, which I wouldn't choose to go to one, to be honest. They're like a big chain and you can get everything done there. God, it's echo, isn't it? I have just had to run back to the car from being in the shop because I left my phone in the car, thank God. I'm heading to one of those therapy clinics for a hydrofacial wouldn't pick to go to a therapy clinic they just don't massively appeal to me i'm just being very judgmental but there's not a lot of option in where i live to go for a hydrofacial um, and i can't be bothered to go into london or so i'm kind of testing out the options that i have in my town and cavendish clinic was good so maybe therapy might be better and i'm just being really judgmental but anyway so we're gonna go there and yeah have a hydrofacial basically you've got to do those things when you start pushing 40. let's talk about that facial i knew i knew this is why a therapy clinic would not have been my go-to you know I, i'm not a snob <laughs> but i went with an open mind you can see my skin's a bit red it's calmed down a lot it was like on fire when i left 
which didn't happen when I had my hydrofacial at Cavendish Clinic. I don't know if it's the products. Cavendish Clinic use skin cuticles. I don't know if it's to do with that. I don't know if it's just the products that therapy use. They have, I think they use this brand called Skin Theory, but it was there was so much that was so different and I'm so glad that I had already had a facial done because if this was my first experience of a hydrofacial, I'd be like, I don't think it's for me. And she kind of mentioned like, gosh, your skin's really sensitive. And I was like, it isn't really. Like my skin, I don't think of my skin as being sensitive. It can be, but it's not really. And it definitely didn't react like this at the last, the last time I had a facial. But there was, it was everything. There was, it wasn't just my skin reacting um, to the products. It just felt very chain rushed in and out. And it was more expensive than Cavendish Clinic, but it didn't feel like a nice, particularly nice experience. It was very no frills, is how I describe it. There were no frills. I went into the room. You were never left in the room by yourself. It was I, At the end of the treatment, I realized like it was a very conscious effort to never leave me in the room by myself, um, which I've just never quite thought of any time I go to a clinic, whether it's bikini wax, anything. And like they always give you time to get yourself ready and then they come back in. So that was a bit weird. And I literally lay down on the bed that just had like paper towel like you do. It was as if I was going to get a wax. And I remember at Cavendish Clinic, I laid down on the bed, I was wrapped in a blanket, like a normal facial, you take your top off and you put your bra straps down, you're wrapped in a blanket, you're nice and warm and nice and cozy, and it was lovely. I remember having an actual facial, like a facial massage, there was none of that. It was like, she just turned the machine straight on and I remember at my last one, I definitely felt like I was having a facial, she was massaging me, and it, it was a while before she turned the machine on, whereas this one, it was straight away. And so I felt like it was, there was nothing outside of the hydrofacial machine. I also feel like she didn't do anything to my neck. It was only my face. And I'm sure it, my last facial included my neck. Um, the LED that was added on, because I got the platinum because I like LED, I don't know what that was. It was like she held a, a light over me for probably no more than five minutes. Whereas again, at my last one, there was an LED like section and she did everything and then she it ended with the LED, I feel like. And it was very much something that she placed over the top of me and again, she left the room and I just chilled under this LED. Um, and that felt like it was for a good 15 minutes, which I feel like LED is like the least that you need. It just felt really rushed, really like bare minimum. And for the price, like if you saved up and paid for this as a treat to yourself, for me, this would not feel like a treat. This would just feel like a very run of the mill, like I'm gonna go and get a wax, like it's something I don't even think about, I just need to get done. I feel like a facial is for you and really nice. And that just was not nice. So if you've been thinking about getting a hydrofacial, I would not recommend going to therapy. I will be going back to Cavendish Clinic for my next one. That's just a massive dif disappointment. I feel like I've just wasted all that money. Why is someone parking right next to me? Okay, let's go. Right, I am just dipping in to round off this vlog because my God, was that the most chaotic vlog that you've ever seen? Should I even upload it? I don't know, I feel like I should. I'm at the salon, I'm working today. Just ordered a little prepped chef's Italian chicken salad. If you don't know about this salad, oh my God, I'm addicted. I could honestly eat it every day. I'm just finishing this vlog and I've just realized I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger with little Elliot. So he was fine. We went back two days later, um, nothing on the x-ray. They just said it's soft tissue damage and he's fine. Nothing broken, all good. So he had this little cast on. Oh, little baby. So he only had it on for two days and they took it off and he was fine. I think what had happened is possibly he might have fallen and daddy didn't see. And also that was a bit of a ranty rant just then about therapy and it was no, like nothing to do with the therapist, she was lovely. Um, it's just nature of that sort of business model I suppose and how they rush treatments and like they do a lot of laser hair removal, a lot of like in and out treatments which is fine but a facial I just think is an indulgent treatment and it should feel like that and it really didn't and a lot of people like myself save to do these things it's a real treat. I was really, really looking forward to just thinking, oh, I'm gonna have this lovely facial. And it wasn't that kind of experience. So if you were considering that and you had a therapy clinic near to you that you're gonna book for, I don't think they're the best for a hydrofacial. They might be okay for other things that are very in and out, but that I don't think they're great for. As I say, I've gone to Cavendish Clinic before. I know there's a few of them around. I would go somewhere slightly more specialist that does a lot more facials. Anyway, I'm gonna round this vlog off. I hope it was okay. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I will see you again very soon.